Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. So recently I decided that I wanted to install Windows XP Professional on my dual Pentium Pro system, for better or for worse. So today we're going to have a look at part of that installation process, as well as some of the hardware modifications I made to the system to make it a more XP capable machine. And then we'll have a look at the performance just to see how responsive it is and what the boot time looks like, things of that nature. The first thing I added to the system was a RAGE XL 8 megabyte video card. It seemed to give a little better performance boost than the S3 card that was in the system. And I also added a PCI to SATA controller. And if you get one with a BIOS, they're really easy to use. So the first thing I did when I got this card was to try it out in my Pentium 233 MMX with a 120 gigabyte SSD drive, and it worked well. And then when I put it in my Pentium Pro, my boot manager found it right away. So that was pretty exciting and it gave me a fair amount of confidence that this was going to work well. And here you can see on boot up where the BIOS detects the drive and the card. And it happens to detect the drive as 111 gigabytes. That's close enough for government work. So the next idea I got was to connect the turbo light up as a status light because I also wanted to leave the original hard drive in the system. So I ordered this nice pack of DuPont connectors. And here you can see we have two blinking lights now, that turbo light blinking on the right whenever the SATA drive is accessed, pretty cool. Now I wanna point out that I often do take the feedback of those who follow RetroTech Chris. So in this case, I had a viewer say, hey, you should deal with the attenuation issues here. <laughs> and I know the viewer was half joking, but RetroTech Chris does listen. Now, since I do use the Boot It Boot Manager to manage multiple operating systems, I went ahead and created a new partition on this SATA disk, and I just made it seven gigabytes, since that's pretty much all we're going to need for Windows XP. If you notice closely, there's already an XP installation on this system as well, which is my quote unquote permanent one. So after creating a partition, we can add the partition as a boot entry here in the boot menu. And we'll go ahead and do that and choose our nice icon, as you can see me doing here, and add it to the MBR, as well as set it to be the boot item. And then we can say, go ahead and boot the BIOS sequence one time so that we can find a boot CD or floppy to perform our installation. So with that, we can go ahead and start the installation process. I did press F6 on startup of the process here so that we can insert our silicon image SATA drivers. And we'll see, we get a chance to do that here. I do have a driver's disk in drive A and we'll get some choices and we will choose the XP choice that you see there. And now that silicon image card will be able to be used as a part of our installation. Great. Before too long, the setup process moves on and we can scroll through the license agreement, reading every word carefully, of course, and then I can choose the partition that I made earlier with boot it, and we will install accordingly. I'm going to leave it intact, and this process will now run for 16 minutes, copying all the files necessary and entering the initial graphic portion of Windows XP setup. Next up, we can choose our region and language, put in our name, product key, and computer name, as well as the date and time and time zone, and the process will continue some more and install the network. And from here, we're just going to do typical settings, which is fine. The network card does get detected. And then another 23 minutes goes by as the installation moves along. That's okay though. I remember Windows XP setup is taking a little bit of time. So even on this older system, having it set up in under an hour isn't too terrible, right? But before long, we're ready for first boot and we can put in all of the goodies here. I love the soundtrack for this. Maybe I should have included that instead of you listening to me. But in any event, we'll get this all set up, but we won't activate right now because this is gonna be a throwaway install. We can put our name in and before long, we will be at the desktop here. And here we are, look at that nice background. So with the operating system installed, let's explore a little bit. Let's look at the display properties and we can see it's default set to 800 by 600. We could change it as high as 1600 by 1200, though we do lose some of our color quality. Let's have a look at the screen saver and see how fast it performs. I have set the flower box to be the maximum size, 
and we can go to preview and we can see it slowly bounces around the screen, but still not too bad, a Pentium Pro system running Windows XP. So next let's have a look at device manager. So you can see the hardware installed on this machine here. First on the properties page, we can see our Pentium Pro processor and it is a dual system. If we go to hardware and device manager, we can see all the nice devices installed. And I'll go ahead and expand the page here. First, we'll start with a computer, and it is a multiprocessor PC. There's our SSD drive, our video card, DVD CD ROM, and our floppy and hard drive controllers and drive. And then we have our keyboard, mouse, our default monitor, as well as our network adapter, which is a Realtek compatible, our ports, and then we can see that nice silicon image, RAID controller, and then our sound card. I have an AWE64 in here, good enough. And then you have all the various system devices, lots and lots of those to see, of course. And finally, USB controller. Let's have a brief look at performance. And to do this, I'm just gonna kind of navigate around and map a network drive and see what that looks like. And as you can see, that's pretty zippy and pretty fast, which is impressive. And I can do directory listings, then go to my computer and have a look there as well and the performance really is not bad. Remember, this is a dual Pentium Pro system. We can navigate folders and do operating system-y type things, and it seems to get the job done. Next, I have to show you something. This computer is not ACPI power compliant. Look at this shutdown screen and tell me how many times in your life you've actually seen it. It's a Windows XP screen that says it is now safe to turn off your computer. How cool. Next up, we'll measure startup time, and I did speed through this pretty quickly, but it takes about 60 seconds to get to a usable desktop, which is not too terrible. It's definitely not a Pentium 4 or something later, but I would say 60 seconds is not too bad. Next, I want to take a minute and talk about a network card saga that I had and what I figured out was wrong, and this is an interesting one. So here you see a 3Com card, a 3C905TX, and when I bought the system, this is what was installed in it. However, in multiple operating systems, I had the same problem. You can see we have connectivity here, and we are configured properly. Okay, let's go ahead and try and map a drive, and I'll do this the same way that I showed a minute ago. We're just going to map to my Raspberry Pi to drive Z, like you see me do in all of my videos. And despite my slow typing, we'll press enter, we wait and wait and wait, and nothing happens. After much investigation, I found the root of the problem is the network card drivers are not dual processor compatible. So we'll go ahead and change our system to use the single processor kernel. And we can do that by going to the hardware wizard and choosing a standard PC. And then we'll go ahead and get that installed, finish that out, and then we can reboot. But first of all, let's check and see if we're still trying to map that drive. Yep, it never succeeded. So upon reboot, let's go ahead and try the same operation again and see what happens. And lo and behold, as we try this, you will see that indeed it does map. And we can see we are now set to standard PC. So I looked at the network adapter drivers to see if there was something special here that I could change. And we can look at the different configuration options under advanced, and we'll see there is nothing we can change. This is just a flaw, and it's just the way that it is. And I did try some other drivers as well with no luck. So in all cases, I had to make a decision. And the decision I made was to put another network card in the system. And this Kingston KNE120TX is working flawlessly. Well, that's what I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Pretty surprising to see just how well Windows XP does on a dual processor Pentium Pro system. As always, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.